For patients with ALS who have lost the ability to speak, game-changing research right here on the Stanford campus could mean a brighter future. It involves a brain-computer interface that uses speech brain waves to communicate. Hello, how are you? <laughs> so Frank, you obviously were in on these research sessions with the patient. How significant are the findings? I think they're pretty exciting because they're the first time we've been able to decode speech from someone's neural activity in a way that's really accurate and general. It ended up at a level that was much more accurate than what had been shown in the past, so it kind of gives us hope that it really is realistic to imagine a future where there's a device that can decode anything they're trying to say with enough accuracy to let somebody have a normal conversation. So walk us through what you did to implant these chips and how it works. The process actually begins well before surgery with imaging. We obtained functional MRI scans that map out the different functional regions of the brain. So this allows us to say, this area that we can see on an MRI scan relates to this particular function and thus we can target our implants to this particular region. We have to fasten pedestals, which are the communication devices that will allow us to read those brain signals out and then put them out to a computer system that can then do something useful with them. And then attached to those pedestals are wire bundles, which run to the arrays and sinks those electrodes down amongst the neurons. So how do those implants translate to the patient in this case being able to communicate since she lost her ability to speak? So that's, that's where the magic happens. How do you feel? The implants are in areas of the brain that are related to speech, and when she's trying to say something, the neurons in those areas have certain patterns of firing that our electrodes are picking up on. And then that gets transmitted to the computer that's running the machine learning algorithms that interpret those patterns. And then when it figures out what she's trying to say, then the computer can display that as text or it can speak that. How significant is this research for Pat? patients with ALS. I think it gives them hope that one day there, there could really be a device that allows them to communicate at the normal rate of speech. So even though they can't speak anymore due to paralysis, there really could be a device like this that figures out what they're trying to say and speaks that for them and lets them have a normal conversation again. And this is a scientific proof of concept. What does that mean and what does it benefit in terms of the future for treatment for ALS patients? It means that it's not a product. Nobody's commercialized it. No company is making it. It's a research study that shows that the fundamental principles are sound. It's just a demonstration that, yes, you can record neurons in somebody trying to speak, and from that neural activity, you can figure out what they're trying to say. It's just proving the fundamental concepts that now people can take this data and go try to make that real device. To me, it means the future is bright, that it's likely that it, you know, a real product could be made that would be accurate enough and general enough to let someone with paralysis say whatever they want to say again and have a normal conversation. This is a goal we've had for a long time, so to see it all come together and <laughs> see the words pop up on the screen and, and have her see get her them face. right, it was cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a long way to go yet. Uh, we've demonstrated that this can be done, that it can be done well, that it can be done with high performance, but there are a lot of steps that have to happen before we get there. I think it's completely game-changing for people who have lost the ability to speak. It's a first step, but it's a big step. First step, but a big step.